Hey, it's Justin Brown here from Primal Video. Recently we did a video explaining the best apps for editing your videos on your iOS devices. Now, the apps that are available now on iOS for editing your videos have come an insanely long way. You can now get some really good results editing on your iPad or your iPhone. So the two that we narrowed it down to were iMovie and Pinnacle. So in this video, we're gonna dive a little bit deeper and we're gonna talk about exactly how you can edit your videos step-by-step step using iMovie. And it's gonna cover everything you need to know to get your editing fast on your iOS device. Now this video isn't a full review and it's also not gonna cover every feature or every tool in the app. We'll also have a very similar video coming soon for Pinnacle and I'll link that up in the cards. Before we jump in, in this video, we're gonna be following through the Primal Video method, which is the most efficient method for editing your videos without any rework or wasted time. We did a video on this a little while back, and if you haven't seen it, you can download the PDF to help you with your videos. Okay, so we'll start off by opening up iMovie, and then we're gonna select Create Project. So then we get asked if we wanna create a movie or a trailer. So we're gonna select Movie. So now it's asking us which template we want to use to create our video. Now we don't want to use a template, so we'll just leave it as simple and click on create. So this is the actual iMovie interface. You can see all your assets and all your project files and everything are up in the top right corner. You've got your playback monitor in the top left and you've got your timeline down the bottom, as you would find in most normal editing programs. So first up, we're gonna import our video footage. So we just select it and hit the little down arrow to drop it down into our timeline. So the first step when you're editing your videos is to remove everything from your video footage that you definitely don't want to have in your end product. So we'll start by removing all the extra footage at the start of the clip that we don't want. And to do that, you just tap on the clip and you'll see that it comes up with a yellow border. So if we click on the yellow handle, the yellow bar on the left side of our clip here, and we drag it across to the right, then we'll start to remove all of the extra footage that we don't want. And we'll do the same at the other end of this clip. So we just tap on the clip, we grab that yellow handle and we drag it back towards the left, right to where I finish talking, so at the end of the video. So you can see it's pretty straightforward and really easy to trim the start and the ends of your clips. So in here, I'm sure there's a few bad takes that we need to remove. So let's just pretend this is the end of a good take here, and we'll add a cut, tap on the clip and select split. Now we just come across to where we wanna add another split, and again, tap on the clip and select split. So you can see how easy it is to split your clips as well. So from here, we can either delete that section by tapping on it and then pressing the little delete button. I'll undo that now. Or we can refine the in and out points of that sub clip that we've just created by adjusting the handles as we did earlier. So in your editing process here, this is where you go through and remove everything that you definitely don't want in your video so that you're left with just the best takes. With iMovie, it's really easy to move around your timeline. You can just pinch to zoom, to zoom in and out, as you would a photo on any iOS device. And you can just tap and slide left and right to navigate around your timeline. If you need to move or reorder any of your clips around, it's just a matter of tapping on the clip that you wanna move, holding down your finger and dragging it to the location you want it. Okay, so now you're at that point where you're happy with the content. Now we just look at adding in some music. So we come across and we select audio, and in this case, we're gonna add a song and we're gonna pick Golden Skies, which is actually one of the tracks that we use for our videos. So once again, it's just a matter of selecting the song and hitting that down arrow to drop it down into your timeline. So what I really like about this is it's practical, it's easy to use. It's automatically lined up the start of the music track with the start of our video. So you can see it's just the little things that make this really easy to create your videos. So if you wanna edit your music track or add a cut in your music track, adjust the length, you do it the same way that we just did with our video clips. So you can tap on the clip, you can add a cut or a split. You can see it's got the yellow handles there on either side. So you get full control over your audio as well. Now, if you wanna add in any B-roll footage, just select video, find the B-roll footage that you wanna use. And now when you select it, instead of clicking that arrow to drop it down to your timeline, select the three dots instead. Now select the icon with the two big squares and this will add your footage down on top of your other video layer. Now obviously this isn't B-roll, so I'll just undo it using the undo button. So now we've got our video in and we've got our audio in, now we're gonna look at adding in titles. So we just select our video clip that we wanna add our title onto, and down the bottom we select titles. So you can see straight out that we don't have a title selected, it says none, 
So it's just a matter of picking which type of title or which animation that you like to go with your video. So we just picked the standard one here and you can see that we've got two options down the bottom to choose center or lower. So we're currently on center and if we pick lower, you'll see that it drops your title down to the bottom left corner of the screen. To edit the title text, it's just a matter of tapping on it, deleting the text that's in it and typing in your new text. To deselect, just tap off somewhere else on the screen and you can then select the second line of text and you can edit that the same way. So just tap on it, delete the text and add in your new text. So now when we play back our video, you can see the text just fades in. So now we're at the point where if you wanna add any video effects or transitions, this is where you add them in. Normally on a video like this, I wouldn't be adding too many transitions or effects in, but if you wanna add any transitions in, it's just a matter of selecting the little marker between your two clips and you'll see the transition options appear at the bottom. So you've got things like dissolve, a slide, a wipe, or a fade, which is actually a dip to black. Normally the next step is to color correct your video. And while it can be done on some levels inside of iMovie, you really don't get the control over your color correction. It's not true color correction as you'd find in a proper video editing app. What this gives you, however, is filters. And it's kind of like the filters that are built into Instagram. They're pretty much consumer oriented versus actual color correction that you'd find in your desktop editing software where you'd have full control over things like the individual colors, the brightness, the saturation, just a whole lot more options to really get the look that you're after in your video. But if you are happy with these filters, then there's two levels of color adjustments that you can make. You can make them on the clip itself, so it's only applied to the individual clip, or you can apply one of these looks to the entire video. So to add one to the individual clip, it's just a matter of tapping on the clip and selecting filters down the bottom. And from there, you just pick the filter that you want for that shot. To apply one of these looks or filters to the entire video, you just come up to the settings panel and you can apply your color effect as a project filter. So next up, we're looking to adjust our volume levels and iMovie does this really well. So the first step is to enable your audio track waveforms and you do that with the button on the right hand side of the screen. So this gives you a visual representation of your audio tracks and you can actually visually see how loud or quiet they are. To adjust the volume, tap the clip that you want to adjust the volume for and down the bottom, select volume. Now it's just a matter of adjusting that volume slider to set the volume to where you'd like it. So what's pretty cool is as you adjust that volume slider, the audio waveform is automatically updating live so that you can actually see the visual representation of how loud your track is. Now you never actually want any of those peaks to go into the red area. Keep them at a maximum in the yellow. So it's just a matter of going through and adjusting all of your speaking parts first. Then it's just a matter of jumping down and adjusting your music tracks and your sound effects so that they're not overpowering and distracting in your video. So while we're here adjusting your audio volumes, you can also add in fades. So it's just a matter of selecting your audio track and picking fade. Now from there, you can move the little triangle slider across to set how long you want the fade in or the fade out to be. And we'll do the same at the end as well. So we're fading our music out at the end of our video. Now, while we're on the topic of fading, if you'd like to add a fade in and a fade out on your video tracks as well, then you can just come up to the settings panel again. And in there, you've got fade in from black and fade out to black. Adding in fades at the start and end of my videos isn't something that I'd normally do, but it's great to know that you've got these options for some projects where that'll suit. So now that we've finished editing our video, it's time to export. It's just a matter of clicking done in the top left corner and then hitting the share button, which is down the bottom in the middle. From there, you have the ability to share direct to things like Facebook, YouTube, Vimeo, and to other applications as well. You can also save your video to your actual device, to your iPad or your iPhone. You can send it to iTunes or even to your iCloud drive. If you found this video helpful, we'd really appreciate a share, a thumbs up, and don't forget to hit that big subscribe button. If you haven't downloaded it yet, make sure you grab our free guide running through the most efficient step-by-step -step process for editing your videos. It's the ultimate process for creating your videos faster without all the unnecessary rework and double handling that I've seen chew up a ton of time in my clients and students over the years. So just hit the link inside this video or below in the description and download it now. I'll see you next time.